if you guys go and like uh, get a classroom are you able to see like a starter code for homework for if that's not the case i look into it but like i can see it on my end but like i don't know if that's like accessible to you guys Yes, I know. Like it should have the link, but like in the setup, it says that the starter code for this homework is available on GitHub. So I think the person who handled the homework for like homework as a whole must have put that on the GitHub classroom. If that's not the case, I can take a look into it and I'll let them know and get the homework for out. Also, like if there was a, a genuine issue with the starter code, then we'll extend the deadline. So don't worry about that. All right, welcome back everyone. Uh, today will be lecture seven, um, which will cover Node.js and NPM. So let's get started. All right, so real quick, before we get into Node.js and NPM, um, I'd like to wrap up a little bit more about the asynchronous JavaScript that we have uh, hit the cover um, and talk about the await keyword in JavaScript. And so 
as a uh, recap of the async keyword. Um, the word async before a function in JavaScript means that um, the function will always return a promise. And this is useful for asynchronous code uh, due to the same reason why we use promises. And other values are wrapped in the result promise automatically. So for instance, um, the function that we have provided here will return a result promise with the result of one. And uh, we can then um, call this function, get a promise, and then use our uh, chaining, uh, promise chaining to console log the result. Um, however, using this uh, sort of method is a little bit convoluted. It doesn't really uh, provide the best sort of way to get the result out from the, from the promise. And so um, there's a much more intuitive way in order to get this result. Um, and that is using the keyword await. And this yeah, provides a much clearer way to process asynchronous code. And with await, you can process async functions just like synchronous ones. And so on the left, we once again have the previous example, but the right uh, shows a little bit uh, the same, the same uh, functionality, but we instead use um, await in front of the function call, and that will await the, the result value of the promise. Um, so we do not have to use any sort of promise chaining. This will simply um, wait for the value of the promise and store it into this uh, variable called result. And then um, in this way, we don't have to do dot then, and then um, another callback function to const.log the result. In this case, we can simply store it um, in our local code. And uh, yeah, one big uh, plus the keyword await is that it helps solve uh, long dot then chain problems. Um, basically, when we're programming in JavaScript, we want to have the code as readable as possible. And um, this just helps again with readability. And um, you don't want to get confused with all this asynchronous code uh, to um, uh, make things harder for you when you're debugging or when uh, going through the entire chain. And so I see someone's asking why uh, we need f to be async here. Um, we do not um, in this case, um, because it's such a simple function. Uh, we're just saying that the async keyword or the async in front of the function tells the, tells the code that it will return a promise. And that's just our way of um, sort of simulating an asynchronous, uh, asynchronous code here. Um, in reality, you'll definitely be doing some kind of other like fetch requests or backend um, manipulation with your asynchronous functions. And so this is just a very simple example that we use to try and uh, elucidate why we use um, await instead of this promise chaining instead. Are there any other questions about um, await? Um, yeah, feel free to ask any more questions. And in the meantime, here's a, uh, an example of how you use the await keyword um, using fetch. So these two blocks of code both um, have the same functionality, but um, and we can see that we want to fetch from some uh, API and then we turn it into a JSON and then we uh, get their profile. Um, but we can do the same exact thing uh, using the await keyword by awaiting the fetch, which will um, get the result from the API, uh, the API call. And then we await this response to JSON. And then we await the user.fetch profile. And then we can uh, quite clearly store these all in their own separate variables. And then we can use them um, in separate uh, function calls. And once again, I mean, you're free to use any kind of uh, method that you want, but whichever one seems easier for you to, to read or to use will definitely be a big plus for, um, for uh, reading and debugging your code. Um, I see someone asks, why do we have two then layers, but not one? Um, 
I assume you mean two dot then like calls? Is that like, well, okay. The reason why we have two dot then calls is because uh, response.json actually also is um, a asynchronous function. And so we have to await this as well. Um, and then we're able to be able to process the information within it. Um, did that answer the question or do you mind um, uh, reiterating part of it? Uh, what's inside the JSON data? Um, it's basically just the JSON object um, that you got back from the article or this API call, but you wanna be able to um, modify it using like a JavaScript object. So you can tr turn it into JavaScript object by saying response to JSON. And then this will allow you to uh, do things um, easier, uh, like function and method calls um, using your own code. And more generally, um, we haven't really given you like the spec of this API call, so anything could be in this JSON, but um, you can just pretend that it's some uh, just some data that you want to um, get from this user. All right, are there any other questions on like await? I think we can move forward now. <clears throat> cool. Okay. So now that we've gone over await, uh, let's switch gears and talk about what is no uh, Node.js. And um, we've linked the, uh, I guess, the official website here for you, um, so you can download Node.js on your own computers. But basically, Node.js is a JavaScript runtime built on uh, Chrome's V8 JavaScript engine. Uh, and it allows you to run JavaScript's, uh, JavaScript scripts outside of a browser, um, basically on your own local machine. And this makes JavaScript a lot more like Python. If you've ever taken um, any other uh, computer science class, you know that you can run Python files uh, just in your terminal with the Python, uh, if you download Python. Um, and this will allow you to do the same with JavaScript files. And so, um, yeah, this makes it a lot easier to run it locally on your machine and uh, it allows you to take advantage of the large number of packages from a large community. Uh, basically just code that people, other people have written and have made public for you to use in your own projects. And um, yeah, so to access these packages, um, you use something called NPM or uh, Node Package Manager, which is a place where you can find and download the packages. Um, we have linked that site as well for you. But basically, you can just, uh, if someone has needed some functionality in their project, it is probably um, some kind of node package. Uh, so if you need to do something complex um, and you don't really feel like, or that you might, you feel like someone else has already run into this problem, it's probably somewhere out there um, as a node package. And yeah, for example, if you wanna create some 3D visualizations, very hard to do on your own, but uh, because people out there are really nice and do uh, open source code, which makes you allow, which allows you to access their code uh, for free, you can just uh, use it, npm install and the package name, which is three, to install a package and that will help you with um, your problem and uh, yeah, there are a lot of packages out there, um, and a lot of them are very useful. So be sure to, uh, I guess, do your own research if you want to uh, make your own project, and that will definitely help uh, expedite your um, your development. Uh, and someone asks, is the purpose of Node to allow us to use JavaScript as a general purpose language? outside of web development? And the answer is yes. Uh, um, typically you're gonna run, or JavaScript is run like on the browser and um, 
uh, with Node, you're able to do it uh, more local, run more local files. And there are some differences between the two that we will go over. Um, and someone else asks why, uh, why not just use Python? Um, I suppose there are differences. Um, personally, I don't use JavaScript too often, like um, for like anything other than um, like web development project, web development projects. But uh, I suppose like um, you could do your research on that. Uh, maybe the packages are very useful. Um, but one big re uh, reason why you use JavaScript is because you can use some package called Express and run your own servers. And that is something we'll also get into um, a little bit later. But uh, yeah, there's one reason and I'm sure there are very many others, but um, yeah. Are there any other questions before I move on? Okay, so there are several differences between JavaScript for Node.js and the JavaScript that we've seen before, which we have used in the browser. Um, yeah, the first one is that uh, we're since we're no longer using JavaScript inside the browser, Node.js does not have any document related functionalities. So if you remember uh, the, the function called document that get element by ID, um, this will not work on Node.js because there is no document object um, for Node.js. Um, additionally, for Node.js, we use the require keyword to import packages uh, that I mentioned previously are from NPM. So if we want to uh, import like Axios, which is something to mock API requests, um, we can do some, uh, we will run the following code, const Axios is require um, Axios. And then finally, uh, with Node.js, we can interact with the local file system. And this, uh, we can also set up a web server and various other things that you cannot do with vanilla JS. As I mentioned previously, a big plus of using um, Node.js is to be able to set up your own web server. Uh, and that is, um, yeah. So being able to, Okay, I see someone asks, um, is require in node like import in browser? And yeah, basically. So you just require um, the package name and you can, and that's how you would import the package using Node.js. Yeah. All right, um, are there also any other questions before um, I switch off and Kartik will handle the rest? All right, well, I think we can move forward. So basically what a web server is, is that you, is that it can accept HTTP, HTTP requests and it can send back HTTP responses, which is basically the what the whole uh, what the whole internet is doing. Essentially, you search up something, a lot of results come up. You click on a website, it again goes to the server of that particular company's website, and it gives you the content. This this is essentially how the whole internet is, internet is working, and we're gonna get into uh, like in like around 15 minutes. So I'm going to give you a demo of how to actually make things like this. And I'm going to introduce some new tools like Node, Node.js that were just into, that was just uh, talked about and Postman as well, which is a really nice tool to test websites out and like play, play, play around with content and actually see what's happening before you actually make the, make your website live. So an example of a user logging to Facebook using HTTP requests would be you, the user, uh, who has an account in Facebook will send an HTTP request with the username and password. And then the Facebook server will basically in step two, it receives the request and it will compare the user's password with the one in database. And the uh, and something that you learn in like, I think uh, 
two two lectures ahead in like the back end one how the authentication is done uh, is that they never know the password that you entered it's it's uh, it's crypt cryptography is involved in some way and like you're going to go through a demo with that and then step 3 is basically the server sends back the user information and along with the login token if the password was right otherwise it will be like the password is wrong and a, a different path will be taken up from there oh, yeah uh so a sim here's an example of a simple web server basically there there are library you can call it libraries like axios and express that you can download which help us do that stuff because uh, which help us like make api calls and help you play around with data because vanilla js which is without node js or like npm is extremely basic and it's extremely limited in terms of the scalability that it can provide so here you can see like if if, if you just like look at the crux of it like here we have app.get which is if you go to this uh this link which is the the main domain for example the main domain is in, in our case localhost 3000 if you go to just that, it'll basically send you back hello world. And app.listen port is basically when the port is established, it'll give you like in the console, it'll basically print out example app listening at HTTP localhost with the port number. Uh, the, uh, this is like a very simple one. And we're gonna like, like after this, I'm gonna build on top of this and walk you through uh, the whole demo of how things actually work around. If you guys, if you people want, you can actually work with me. I'll be making it from making it from scratch. It can be like a nice demo, and you can like get like hands-on experience uh, and like start with how things are done. So, yeah. I'm going to open a new folder with the name demo, for example, and then basically I'm going to create a new file with index.js, which, which is the only file that we'll be writing in for this demo. After that, open the terminal and here we're going to install node, node uh, the libraries that node helps us do that. If you don't have node install, I think you can go over the reading and there are steps of how, how to do that. I'll just skip that because I, I already have that installed and uh, it'll be a bit of waste of time. It's basic instructions. Uh, so, so npm init dash y basically initializes the project if you, in a sense. And dash y is basically that, uh, like if you don't do dash y, there'll be a bunch of questions and you'll be have to, and you'll have to type in y for each of them. If you do dash y, it'll basically assume that for all the questions, it, it, it like you answered yes. In 99% of the cases I do that. And if there's an extremely specific project where you want it to be different, then that's, that's a specific case. And you can get into the, uh, you, you can get deep into it and like how each, like what each of them mean. Then, uh, we're going to need express and axios so i'm going to install that and i just npm install express npm install axios and there are some other variations of installing this like if you add dash g it gets installed globally and you don't have to do that uh, again and again but uh, and then you can download it, download it using yarn, which is another package manager. So, but like, I, I just go with this because I know for sure that it's, it's getting downloaded or not. And the dash G sometimes, although initially it, it, it seemed cool to me that I don't have to, have to do it again, but like it's, some, it's sometimes that leads lead to some errors. Yeah. So for this project, this is all that we need in terms of the libraries and the installations. Now I'm going to get, like, get into write, writing stuff. So require is a specific way in JavaScript in uh, it's very similar to importing libraries. Uh, this is how you import and use the libraries like Express Axis that you just in installed. Libraries, I think, would be really 
uh, similar way to understand what express and axios are and which it basically just like libraries in gives you more access to multiple functionalities which vanilla js wouldn't have done that this is the port number that we're going to work on sometimes for, for some people if they're working on multiple projects a port might be might not be active and maybe you can just change it to 2001 i think it's worked for like for, for most of the time or 5000 I'm just going to go with 3000 for now. Here I'm basically calling the express function, uh, which is establishing the, the, the app that is going to utilize the functionalities of express for the calls that we want to make. Uh, these these are some extremely like uh, generic and basic lines of code which you're gonna do it like do in almost all the projects that you use, uh, which involve Express and Axios of course. But I think this is something which is um, is there a question? Okay. So required in Node is an important browser. Important browser. What do you mean by that? But like it's it's very similar to what uh, what like import does in other languages. Is versatile and alternative. Um, so you know. Okay. This is basically parse, uh, used for parsing based on uh, request bodies, which are gonna do that really soon. Um, then, so let's get into the first API call. The first API call would be a simple get uh, API call. So, so there are majorly four API calls, get, post, put, delete. There are others as well, but these are the main ones that you would need. So get is basically, if you want to get get some information from an already existing data, uh, like data in, in a particular server. Post is if, if you want to, uh, post is if you want to, add some data and then put is I think uh, you add some data and you can replace it as well and then delete is deleting a particular content so how you how, what the basic structure of a, of these calls are is that yeah so I'll get uh, so basically this port means that the our website would be at local host 3000 and when I say that the so when I when I say that like the first argument is just a backslash, it's just a forward slash. It's it basically means that this this uh, this call will be executed when I'm at that particular link, which is just local localhost three thousand and, and you know just a slash for example, right? And then the second argument, which is common for all of them, is a request and a response uh, and response variables. And then I have the arrow function. And I, I think we'll, uh, I'll just make a simple one where I send back hello world. Uh, yeah. This was our get, our get call. And the way to actually see this is that uh, I, I, I run node index.js, which is basically node index.js. Yes, the code is local. Yeah. 
Yeah, so now it's running uh, also. Yeah. I, I think one thing I can do that, that was in the simple server demo as well. For you to know that it's actually working, is that you can take this and uh, take this, uh, like have this command always there, uh, like at the bottom actually, and which is basically which lets you know that the that your code is working. Uh, because like sometimes although it it doesn't error, you don't know if it's actually being uh host hosted or server. So, for example. So now if I run, if I run no index.js, I get this statement, which helps me in, in a sense, know that it's working. Also a better command that in, uh, a better command than node.index.js is something that I use, uh, for, and you have to install that. It's, it's, it won't be pre-installed, uh, which is basically node mod. It's, it's better in the sense that when, when I make changes to the code, I, I, I again have to like, uh, I have to cancel the previous node command and then run it again. But what node one basically does is, I don't even have to write index.js, but I think so. Basically, now 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 it's doing the same thing. But like when I when I make it make a change, for example, if I make it, oh uh, yeah, I'll do this add and then I save it. It'll it'll run it again and execute it without me needing to implement the command again. And just when you save it, it'll, it'll restart the whole server and like the whole app and you can do the same command you, you can work with it however you want without needing to it's just a it's just a small trick uh you, you i might say and which makes your life a bit easier i guess yeah so 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 the thing so like uh, now you must be wondering how do i test that uh app dot get is working or not or, or like where do i even see hello world so there's this uh application called postman you can install it. It's free. It's basically basically helps you work with API calls. It, it could be, and it's like extremely versatile. It's it's something like that. Like even like even companies uh use right now. Uh, and like it's like one of the like most popular dev tools, like in this space. And it's extreme. It's it's so good. So over here, basically how it's working is like it might seem like a bit. Like too much initially, but like don't don't worry about like a lot of stuff. Like we I, we'll just go over what we actually need at least for the, this decal and like for most of the basic projects. And like I'll, I'll, I'll let you know some some good things about this, which can uh, make uh, something that would be you can create like multiple uh you you can create multiple collections, which 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 can help you manage multiple projects or or, or multiple API calls if you if you're getting too complex. But like right now we just have one app, so I, I'll just like get right into it. So here we have to enter the URL, which is at the top here. I just showed it here. Also, I can just like go to the, this website to see if it's working or not. It, it prints out hello world because because right now I'm basically calling the get call in a sense, and it's basically printing out hello world. But get a copy of So I basically I send send this call and hello world gets printed in, in the in, in the console, if you might say. And there are basically other all the other calls that you can make post, put, patch, delete, copy, like a lot of them, right? And we, we get call something that we just did is working. Now let's get into another call, which is the post post call. So the structure is extremely similar. Uh, uh, and now I have to give the ex extra URL link that I have to add in addition to localhost 2000, which will be, um, let's say, is not done. Or basically post and check if 
what we pass in as the data, like in our request, is, is a hurdle or not. I'm gonna explain like what like these couple of lines mean, mean in a second. So I think it means the whole thing. I think that's it for the for this API call, uh, for this call. I don't know why I'm saying API calls again and again. So for this call, what we're basically doing is that we're we're going to be passing some JSON object with the with 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 the food content, which I'm going to like explain how how the JSON object or or like how the uh, request structure is. So and it's basically getting into the the request dot body means that it's getting into the body of it, and then it's basically getting the value at the uh, at the food at, at the at the key food so basically json object is like a dictionary right with, with multiple key value pairs and here food is one of the keys and it's and this is going to basically give me access to the value at, at the key food in the json object and then once we have that we can just do a simple if, if else condition if it's a hot dog then rs dot then what we resp respond is that it's a hot dog otherwise it's, no it's not a hot dog and how are we going to test this is that how we're gonna test this first? We're gonna make it a post call, and then we had this is hot dog as our specific URL, which which is gonna help us execute the post command, right? And then I just don't send it. It's gonna it's it's just gonna be like no, it's not a hot dog because the food is nothing because there was nothing passed. Uh, it, it's a food must have been null. So for for you for you to pass in the uh, data. What you have to do is basically, um, yeah, go into body and then go into raw. And then once you get into that, it'll have like multiple options of, of in what PowerPoint you wanted and then choose JSON. So now basically you have to create a JSON object that, that you're going to pass, pass in as the request. And uh, we saw that the we saw that like inside the body we have food as our key and then we're gonna write our json object and then we're gonna just do food and then it points to hot dog yeah. everything has to be inside quotes that's something which is in the case in other languages but like in a json object has to be always in quotes like the keys and the values now i'm gonna now i'm, I'm gonna send the request and it says it's a hot dog. If I make a pizza, it's gonna say it's not a it's not a hot dog. If I again, it's say it's gonna say it's not a hot dog because it was hard coded to it not having a space, right? And it's now it's gonna say it's a hot dog. So that was a post call. I think. Um, are there any questions? What's the difference between me? Which app is okay? Yeah, it's Postman. Okay, I think Josh can take care of the question. Okay. Now we're gonna get into the last for last the last call for this demo, which covers almost like the most important ones, which is the put call, and again I'm gonna define. The exact URL at which I want to call this, I want this URL to get executed, and then this is a specific syntax as in, uh, with a, with a colon and ID, which which is gonna help us access what ID is, uh, and we're gonna do that inside the body, and you can see like how how this, 
helps us access to something that is in the URL. In the post, in the post call, we passed it as in the request. But what if we pass something in the URL? How do we access that? So that's something that the poll helps us do. So let id is equal to request dot yeah so also if you you must have seen that like i think this line is what it, what is helping us do this thing uh just, just something i wanted to make clear so request dot parents this is this basically gives us access to the parameters in the in the url and then the specific one is id because apart from colon, apart from a colon there are other ways of doing it as well like there are other specific characters as well which which help you access some other uh, some other stuff in the in the url but for this one we just want request dot param id which is given which, which is going to give us access to the parameter that we passed in in the url instead of the id like at the place of id and i'm going to create like uh, a list which is which you can act or which you can understand as if it's a database it, had it been like a json object uh, which, which is extremely easy to make or like a json object at a at a particular server and if you want to update that it's, i'm gonna do something sim very similar but with just an array uh and it's gonna like basically mirror how data how databases are updated so you get the id in the url and you get the id from the url and then if you want to basically you can just like do a simple command like l dot push id and that's going to basically update l and then i'm just going to r r just dot send the id back back so that i can see that in the console uh, in postman and so that i know that it actually uh understood what, what what i was trying to send this is it for the put call and then I'm basically first again gonna change it to put what was our link, which it was put call an ID. I'm gonna do that. Or if I send this, let's see how we got that. Okay. I'm gonna replace it with four. Mm, Okay, I think the semicolon was missing. Oh, yeah i think yeah i think i think i missed this uh basically you need to have a slash uh like the whole uh string starting with a slash and then uh, have to have the next part of the url oh someone did point that out in the chat that's right uh so now now you you can see that like i'm passing one and then you can see one in the console console if i pass in three you can see three if it wasn't any other number, it's gonna render that and if i want to see what l has become the the array that we were pushing it to i'm, I'm gonna create like a, a get function like a get call like really quick so let, let's let's make this l just this l and then uh, That's it. This works. And then let's add some. Okay. And then I want to 
the link is at slash just slash l and then you just see one second why me oh since i restarted the server that's why like it it resets it reset the uh, the l array as well i can like do that again Then if I do the get function, the get call with well as the latter part of the array, you're gonna get like all the elements that you have. Also, since here everything was being passed, like in the in the request, like in, in the URL, everything was being passed as strings. That's why you, you see strings in the uh, you see strings in the uh, list or, or or the array. That's something to look for, uh to look out for if you wanna change that. If you want to change that, then you can cast it or something like that. I think that's it for the demo. Uh, if anyone wants the, if anyone wants the demo code, you can, uh, you, you, maybe you can make a ad post and you can share that. But like, I would highly recommend that you try it out, try it out on your own and then play around with it with Postman and then making maybe some delete delete calls or maybe making some more complex posts or put calls because there's a lot out there. Uh, maybe we'll watch some watch watch some cool videos on how uh, uh, like on, on how these calls actually work uh, uh, like in live projects. I think something that we, I think we're gonna go uh, if if we haven't done that previously. Something that we're gonna go over uh, is using the NASA API call. I, I think I think we did that. I guess uh, and basically using that like accessing the data and then accessing even images and then using and then rendering that on our website. So that was something which was a step further than just making basic basic calls, and then there are like newer newer methods of doing this. So something like something like I can give an insight on is there's a thing called router which basically helps you simplify a lot of this stuff. And uh, in in case if you have multiple multiple links, and you can use router. Router is like another. Uh, another library like Express or Axios, and then you can use that to even like make it like more streamlined. Here we here we just had two or three calls. That's why it didn't seem it it didn't seem like much complex. But when you have multiple multiple calls, and more importantly, when you have data coming from APIs, you get multiple asynchronous asynchronous function calls you might see multiple dot then dot then calls you, even if you're using the await keyword it, it can get messy at times and that's why things like maybe router or like new newer developments come in and make it easier and easier for you uh, i think that was it for the class uh, you, you guys gonna ask some questions now we're gonna stay here for a bit mm -hmm.